well, warmer night than last night. There's still uh, frost over everything, but just a little dew. <laughs> Seen a lot of those. They seem to be uh, rather curious. So you see how there are bubbles turn coming out of that valve? This thing is turned off completely. This has been an ongoing issue the last couple of years. This is currently a Soto Windmaster. I have also seen the exact same thing with the Pocket Rocket Deluxe, which is basically MSR ripping off the WinPro. And this stove works great. And this amount of leak isn't too bad, but I start worrying and having to uh, disconnect it at night, which is kind of annoying. I noticed it originally because I actually started smelling like isobutane around the tent. And um, yeah, the, the leak will get that bad. Soto replaced the stove multiple times. MSR, eh, their, their warranty isn't quite as good. I kind of got the runaround from them. So this is coffee number two while I finish my edits. Then I'm going to wander back down to the road and see if I can't get a ride into Lake City. <laughs> I get annoyed by town days like this because it's a big pain to go in, buy everything, have to deal with the hitches, and I don't even get the benefit of, you know, holing up in a uh, hotel room for the night. I probably need about an hour and a half, two hours charging batteries, and um, then just triage enough food to get me through what I hope is going to be six days. It's a little over 100 miles, but I, I think I can make that. Once you start getting up to like six, seven days of food, at least me, I really start, you know, feeling it a little more. And you might have noticed from the last day or two that uh, this trail's been getting steep and high. When I woke up, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, just crystal clear stars, but uh, clouds are coming in. Supposedly, this is a day that a storm hits, but I don't know what time. I actually had a mouse or something uh, chewing up my coffee cup. Woke up around midnight, 1 a.m. I'm careful about uh, keeping my food contained inside my pack. It's never pushed up against the side of my tent, so I've <laughs> never had an issue as far as mice uh, chewing in to get at something in the tent, but I also avoid those really busy campsites since those tend to have more rodents and things. When I heard something uh, chewing at the coffee cup, all I did was I put the uh, pot and the coffee cup on top of the stove, went back to sleep, and never had another issue. I had a pretty quiet night other than traffic noise down below. This worked out uh, fairly well as far as uh, campsites near trailhead passes go. You can tell a lot of people camped around this area just because of uh, little bits of trash. So I went further back. Looks like my long distance Packer friends came through here. Bunch of hoof prints. I am just uh, really hoping this hitch goes well and I can get in and out of town. Okay, and just got lucky. There's a guy hanging out up here who says uh, he'll give me a ride down if I haven't been picked up by the time he finishes with his stuff. I have contemplated getting a sign that just says like CDT hiker to town or to trail. Uh, however, when I actually talk to the people that pick me up, uh, they have expressed that it's pretty damn obvious I'm a hiker. <laughs> Might help with some of the uh, just vacationers, but I don't think they pick us up anyway. Later in the season it gets, the more the hassles like, you know, the, the cold nights, the rain, and the uh, hitching into town kind of get to me. Whereas earlier in the season I tend to be a little more gung-ho. Well, it's a good thing that guy's going to give me a ride because uh, I've seen one vehicle and my success rate is 0% at the moment. Fun adjustment. Not to mention I was in, you know, Louisiana down at sea level and it changed. A lot of the famous trail angels, they all disappeared. I mean, Casa de Luna is closed. A little heavier on snack food and candy, but it'll work. Okay, resupply done. Now I just gotta find a place to charge my battery. I have been offered two rides out of town, so <laughs> that, that's probably a good sign. I think this is it. In between talking with the hosts and other hikers, I did take a look at their trail register, and it looks like the majority of people are Colorado Trail, but there are some CDTers. So I officially outlasted the uh, hosts here at the hiker in, uh, annex, but uh, I'm welcome to stay here during the day. I'm just charging and waiting for the rain to end so I can get back to trail. And this place has uh, awesome for many reasons, not the least of which is they have really good coffee. Sun's back out. I am highly, highly caffeinated and... Um, waiting for a ride up the hill.
shedding layers. Wow, this really turned around in a couple of hours. So we were traveling most of the most of the length of Lake here. You could just sign up to do one of them. Okay, that was not the quickest town stop, but that really did uh, buoy my spirits here. I did the resupply and it was fine, a little bit limited. They didn't have any plugs, so I walked across town where there was a hiker annex put together by a local church. And that was just spectacular. Basically the guy that runs the church had seen a similar thing out on the AT and wanted to kind of bring that sort of energy out here. So they have this whole little building with coffee and coffee. Did I mention coffee? They had really good coffee and pretty much everything you could ask for. So I was sitting there charging my battery, chatting away with folks. Got to be one o'clock when I would have been leaving. And then that's when the rain started. So I held until about 2.30 and one of the volunteers that staffs that place came out extra early just to drive me up here. So, rain seems to have cleared for the moment. Talking to locals, I'm hopeful for the next little bit. That extended storm on Friday, the one that uh, hit me going up that creek. I've now confirmed with multiple locals that uh, that was a somewhat unusual storm for this time of year. And that most of the time it's gonna be like today. Just these little bursts of rain. So the good news is I was able to get all my episodes uploaded through yesterday. <laughs> Shouldn't have anybody worrying that I've gone off and died in the mountains because there's a gap of a couple of days. And I've got six or seven days-ish of food to get me to the 106-ish miles out to Pagosa Springs. Today's kind of a gimme, heavier pack and getting a late start. But should be able to get four or so hours up. Uh, there is water in about nine miles. May try a name for that. I also only have another 30, 40 miles, I think, till the uh, Colorado Trail people leave. That means less people for me to waste time chatting to and uh, easier access to campsites. So I haven't really had any contention, but it also means I'm gonna start seeing more down trees and things like that. Because Colorado Trail maintenance is somewhat legendary. I was able to check in with Jen briefly. We didn't have time to talk too early in the afternoon. She was still at school. But apparently her uh, CR trip this weekend went well. Hopefully I'll have uh, video clips from that included in a future episode. I'm trying to get her into the habit of uh, at least given me enough to do a little bit of an off-trail update for her. She just does not like filming. She's gotten a lot better. If you look back when she joined me on the Eastern Continental Trail, she used to freeze every time I uh, turned the camera on her. But she can't just kind of naturally turn the camera on and start talking about whatever occurs to her. I wasn't able to get a shower or laundry this stop. That would have just taken too much time. But that's okay. Scares the bears off if I smell bad enough. And my plan, at least at the moment, is when I get to Picosa Springs, that's a bigger town, go in, do an overnight there, recharge everything, laundry, etc., etc. And then after that, that should get me down into New Mexico before I have to worry about another one of those. Colorado is absolutely beautiful, but it is the most freaking expensive state. When I got stuck in Winter Park, it cost me 700 bucks for uh, three nights in a hotel when I was so sick I didn't have a choice. So yeah, they can be harder to come by in New Mexico. Sometimes you're in these a little bit maybe rundown style motels, but far more affordable. Plus when I hopefully get out to the Black Range, I already have the Wi-Fi passwords for Winston. The Black Range is very, very rarely done. Most people take the more direct cut off through the Gila. There was some worrying rumors about water carries out there. As near as I can tell, they came from one guy that was studying the FKT of the CDT and he bailed off 
and went into the Gila. I'm expecting longer water carries. I don't know quite how long yet. I'll look as I get closer with whatever bait is available. But uh, I may end up adding just like a hand carried gallon jug to give me some extra capacity. Almost did that on the Grand Enchantment Trail, but I was able to get by. So my favorite thing about Lake City, other than the awesome uh, people at their uh, church hiker an annex, is that was actually the location where they tried Alfred Packer. If you don't know who Alfred Packer is, I think the first person ever charged with cannibalism in the U.S., but don't read Wikipedia. That's lame. Instead, you need to find this documentary called uh, Cannibal the Musical, done by the guys who made South Park. They did it, apparently they were in film school. Rather than finish film school, they like crowdfunded this thing. I usually show it coming back from snow camp with the wilderness course, because it has everything. Wilderness survival, nutrition, group dynamics, and singing. It is available online. The DVDs are sold by Troma, and I believe it's streaming in a couple of places. Don't let the first five minutes put you off. Wait until the singing starts. I actually use a uh, rendition of that main theme sung by myself and my staffers to wake students up during our Joshua Tree outing. In the olden days, a previous group leader used to sing uh, the opening song from Oklahoma, but I'm not cultured enough to have ever seen Oklahoma. So we sing one of the songs from Cannibal the Musical. If it sounds like I'm in a night and day better mood than when I went into town, pretty much. I mean, part of it is they fed me enough espresso to give me heart palpitations, but it's probably fine. <laughs> and just uh, getting to visit with all the nice folks. I've been uh, struggling to get back into my solo through hiker groove. I've been doing okay, but I'm usually kind of more content being out here alone. And signs of discontent for me when I'm out here is usually uh, best seen as annoyance at my audiobooks. Normally, I'm listening to audiobooks, you know, eight plus hours a day. I, I've always read a lot, and that's just kind of how I have time now. When I get into a bad mood, either because I'm tired or, in this case, like I said, the drop after starting out solo again, I find myself just getting annoyed when the books go slowly at all. I thought I'd cheer myself up and do some apocalypse into the world fiction because that usually cheers me up. And uh, started the passage, been struggling with that. Seems to go too slow. Started The Rise and Fall of Dodo by Neil Stevenson. I've been enjoying that more, but it also feels like it's dragging. Partially that's just the nature of wandering up 12 and 13 thousand foot peaks with a pack and huffing and puffing. Funnily enough, I went back to the books that uh, The Last Kingdom Netflix show, which I have somewhat mixed feelings on, were based off of. And that's been entertaining enough. The guy who uh, narrates it is the same guy who did the Winter King Chronicles. And that guy can yell shield wall better than anybody else. When I first got out here, I had an easy couple of days because the uh, latest book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series, aka Jen's current favorite book series, came out. And that went great. But sadly, I finished that one and there won't be another for, you know, another year. If I explain the premise, it's probably going to turn everybody off and you're not going to try it. But I will say the mix of an awesome narrator and a very entertaining story makes it uh, far more entertaining than the premise would uh, seem to suggest. Plus, it uh, stars a cat named Princess Donut, who Jen absolutely adores because she adores all things cute. I really have to get her to read the Threadbare trilogy. So all the hikers I've run into in the last couple of days and everybody that I ran into in Lake City and I got to meet about seven different hikers while I was there are all Colorado Trail. And I have no sense of uh, what's been going on this year as far as the CDT. I follow the Facebook group off and on, but I've been out of touch so much. I've got some friends who are on it. But they were all northbound, so they're doing basically a completely separate thing. And uh, I ran into some CDT hikers, obviously a little further uh, north 
Um, they're probably a week or two behind. They'll probably pass me if they come this way. But a lot of people get to that Creed Junction and it's hard to uh, make the turn that's going to be, you know, a hard kick in the pants for a week versus just doing a cutoff and making it out of Colorado. I am what could charitably be described as a red line enthusiast. And it's hard for me sometimes making that turn when it's like, but, but if I go there, so much easier, so much easier. If you're curious about what routes people do, it's pretty much impossible because for everybody posting on YouTube, you know, there's 200 people out here just doing their thing. Probably about the best source of information that I've seen anyway is the uh, Halfway Anywhere Hiker Survey. Uh, he's been doing them for the PCT and the uh, CDT. And even there, I mean, it's people who respond and voluntarily take it. It's not like everybody who's out here gets a prompt. So it's kind of like the John Ladd survey for the uh, John Muir Trail. But you know, it's what we got. Everything I've seen indicates that this section is rarely done and the Black Hills is all but never done. And if it seems crazy that people would skip such a beautiful section, just keep in mind the weather window on the Continental Divide Trail is absolutely brutal. You gotta be clear of Glacier and you gotta be clear of the San Juans by the time winter really sets in and uh, it is way, way, way tighter than the AT or the PCT. When I did the Pacific Crest Trail, I felt like I was rushed, like I had a tight weather window, but <laughs> prior to the endless fires, that was very, very doable. And the AT, you gotta work damn hard to miss the weather window on the AT. Now there's enough hostel and beers available that uh, people do work that hard. I have seen some uh, hilariously slow progress as people, you know, vortex for <laughs> days or a week at a time at the hostels. Angel's Rest has a patch if you stay there enough days, just saying. I didn't realize they did sheep grazing up here. <laughs> there was a section of Wyoming uh, somewhere past Yellowstone that uh, had the experimental uh, sheep area. Some people apparently got some uh, rather aggressive encounters with sheep dogs. Well, it was clear and sunny. <laughs> Wait another 15 minutes and see what happens. Back in Texas, we had uh, family friends who had sheep on their property. <laughs> that uh, ringing of their bells is very, very nostalgic for me. So it's just uh, looking ahead on the elevation profile, trying to see where the next low point is. <laughs> the next real low point is 16 miles, and I ain't making it that far. So it'll be a 12K. Why, hello. <laughs> No, I have no food. Sheep are nice, though I've always preferred goats. I spent two years living on a property that was raising uh, pygmy goats, and I love that. The babies were so incredibly cute to play with, and they're just fun to watch because they uh, reestablish dominance by headbutting all the time. <laughs> I was highly entertained. Only downside is the landlord put the uh, goat mating pen right next to my bedroom. So I occasionally had to deal with some uh, amorous pygmy goat coughs, but uh, you know, that's what you get for living on a farm. Oh, I wish I still lived on a farm. And of course there's thunder. I mean, this is my own fault late in the day, and if you're gonna get thunder, it's usually gonna be later. <laughs> so we'll see. There was a uh, road crossing in six some miles I was kinda aiming for, but I do have a full water load with me, just in case I need to stop early. Okay, I had pretty steady thunder. I don't mind the rain, but I'm not screw up. <laughs> Yeah, and there's the lightning. I think I'm gonna pull over at the trees, give it a while, 
And if this doesn't clear, I'll just go tomorrow. Problem is, all the trees look like this. Okay, had down strikes in the field up ahead, so I jumped into the trees. Unfortunately, this late in the day, this might be it. I'm just gonna try and find a secure spot here. Man, I wanted to hike for a couple hours. Unfortunately, the section up ahead is pretty exposed, kind of like that last section, so not the sort of place I'm gonna be in a thunderstorm. Let's see, here's just hoping they, uh... And yeah, that, that's pretty much right on top of me here. Well, normally I'd just hunker and try and wait it out, but uh, this doesn't feel super fast moving. And I've got thunder and lightning right on top of me, so <laughs> I, I do not want to be anywhere further out. I was seeing some down strikes up ahead. So this is probably it for the night. Oh, well. <laughs> At least it was a cheap stop, even if it wasn't an efficient one. I used to enjoy thunderstorms up here a little more before I was on a route that stayed up here so much. And uh, before that whole episode on the uh, Mississippi near Cape G. <laughs> uh, I still got PTSD. Well, I told myself that if it uh, blew past, I was going to pack back up and go. But it's still an hour. And every time I'm like, oh, maybe maybe it's done. No, there, there's more. So home sweet home for the night. Here's hoping they about blow down stuff like follow me.